Hello, I'm Keith Ford and welcome to another edition of From the Vault and today we're here at Rock Island Auction Company with some of my most favorite guns of all time, the belt fed machine guns. We'll start out right here with the potato digger and then we'll go over here to the 1917 water cooled and then finish up with the 1919 air cooled. Now the 1895 Colt Browning belt fed machine gun was the first successful gas operated machine gun and was the first machine gun adopted by the US military, although it was never formally adopted by the Army. These saw limited use in the Spanish American War and eventually made it into World War I under very limited production numbers. They fired from a closed bolt and this one right here is in caliber 30-06, which is a later gun. The early ones were in 3040 Craig and in the six millimeter uh, Navy. Now the way that this operated was that as the bullet went down through the barrel, once it passed here, this gas port, it would activate this charging lever. And it would come back, cock the gun, and load it up. Now trouble with this was it being a closed bolt air cooled gun was after a, a lengthy time of firing they would start cooking the rounds off. So guys that were untrained on this that just sit there and ran that whole belt they'd start having problems. But if you were trained on how to use it you could get it under control, keep it in minimal bursts and you could keep it running. Now Browning saw the issue with this gun so he decided to up the game on that with right here the Browning 1917 water-cooled heavy machine gun. This right here, Browning put a water jacket on it, water-cooled this, and whenever Browning demonstrated the 1917 to the U.S. military, it ran 20,000 rounds continuous without a stoppage. These made it into limited numbers in World War I, uh, probably a couple of thousand, not a whole lot, but these were a beautiful heavy, nice machine gun, manufactured in 30-06 and was actually done by Colt as well and also the 1928 which was an updated version of this. A lot of those were sold to Argentina in 7.65 caliber. Now Browning and the military decided that they needed something a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to pack around and air cooled. Uh, basically they took the 1917 and did some modifications to it and put a barrel jacket on here, took the water jacket off, and you have the 1919 air-cooled. Has the air-cooled barrel jacket right here. A little different on the sight. It has a booster up here on the front. Quite a bit heavier barrel than the 1917, but these were used a lot uh, on Jeeps. They actually put them on Jeeps, put them on some uh, aircraft in the rear of them. And uh, there was also a man portable version of this, which was 191986, which had a stock back here, carried the carry handle right here, then had a conical muzzle flash hider up here. This right here had a low mount tripod. Tripod on this actually had a little oak seat for it. 1917 had the heaviest, which was it, it was a heavy machine gun. But these are really, really really cool pieces. I love belt feds and this is pretty much the progression of the belt fed machine gun from Spanish American War up to just about the start of Vietnam. The 1919 was phased out uh, by the M60. It replaced that. The water-cooled 1917 saw a little bit of use in Korea and then it was phased out. But overall these are amazing guns stood the test of time and you'll still find some of these 1919s still running around in the wild out overseas in various third world countries and stuff. But just heavy steel, mean stuff and the really, really cool guns and some of my favorite pieces. Thank you for watching, hope that you enjoyed this and we'd like to thank Rock Island Auction for letting us come out and peruse all their wonderful machine guns and cannons. And be sure and tune in again whenever we bring another gun from the vault.